All right, and now I'm getting word that we are ready for our next run, which is Crypt of the Necro Dancer Amplified. So here is Spooty Biscuit. Hey everyone, I'm Spooty Biscuit. Uh, joining me on commentary is Goof. What's poppin', everybody? Um, so this is uh, Necrodancer. I'm just going to give a quick explanation of what we're about to see. It's uh, basically a turn-based roguelike uh, dungeon crawler with a uh, turn timer that is tied to the rhythm of the song. And we are going to be playing Coda. Uh, Coda was kind of added as a little bit of a gag towards the end of the game's development cycle. If you uh, go to pick her in the character selection, you'll note the phrase, probably impossible. Um, she combines Arya, Bolt, and Monk. Arya can only use the basic dagger, has no health, and dies on missed beats. Bolt runs the game at twice the tempo, and Monk means you can't pick up any enemy gold. Um, so, while I'm not going to be moving nearly as fast as uh, what you just saw in the Pump It Up block, um, there is a lot of decision-making on the fly, and there's, there's a lot to, you know, kind of... Um, you know, take uh, take in the, uh, um, all the time. So just to kind of quick give a quick demonstration, if after I move, if I miss a beat, I die. If I do something that I can't do, like dig a wall, I can't do. Uh, I can't dig with my shovel. I die. If I take any hit, I die. If I go over here and kill an enemy and step on its goal, I die. So this is a really intense run on the focus. So um, yeah, only a few, uh, like a couple, few dozen people have cleared it. So um, just wanted to give you guys kind of a, a prelude to this because I'm probably going to be focusing most of the run goofle handle commentary once we start. I think we're ready to get going. Um, and uh, yeah, time starts as soon as we step on the all zones mode stairs here. And uh, yeah, ready in three, two, one, go. Okay, let's, um, this right here is all zones mode, so as the, the text at the beginning says, you got to complete all zones in a single run, so if Spooky dies at any point, he starts at the very beginning of the game. So, uh, we have the first zone here, zone one, a pretty simple zone, uh, a bunch of these uh, little hall, I mean, little rooms, and uh, you see he picks up the, he found a hidden room there by digging a wall that contained a glass torch. Blast Torch uh, gives him, allows him to see all enemies on the floor, as well as, <clears throat> uh, as well as uh, gives him some like, extra viewing radius. And he also picked up the Boots of Strength from that shop. Now, um, since he dies to gold, usually those items will cost money. But since uh, he dies to gold, the items in the shop are free. And he picked up the Boots of Strength there, which grants him plus one damage. So picking up the. Um, titanium shovel. This will allow uh, the titanium shovel will allow him to dig certain walls um, that he wasn't able to dig normally, like these cobblestone walls. He is able to dig those now with the titanium shovel. As you um, progress through levels here, you'll start to see harder enemies like those yellow uh, yellow skeletons. On other characters, they would you know deal more damage, but since Oda dies in one hit, it doesn't matter at all too much. There's a Shriner. Um, on one three there, it has a, it gives you a selection of three shrines. Looks like Booty isn't going to take those just yet. And also getting the Blast Helm. Blast Helm uh, gives you plus three bombs, and it will also detonate them instantly, as well as protect you from all other bombs. So it's quite good. Here we have already on the first boss, Vertissimal. Get it? He's a strong mole. He is a he is a rapping mole, and he um you get him off the stage here, and he tries to go after you, and then just take care of him just like that. Picking up the now when you defeat a boss, um. Monster in the in the tar there. Oh no! So it's something that uh, Goof didn't really mention, but um, this is a roguelike. So when I die, not only do I go, I go back to the start of the game, but it is a completely new game. Um, all the floors are going to be different. All the items are going to be different. All the enemy location, like everything, is different now. So um, that's okay. I did uh, assume that a death or two was very likely. Uh, the estimate does factor that in. So, um, yeah, just back to zone one. Good start, though. Bright Torch is going to show me a lot of 
enemies. Blast Jaw gives me extra damage. Blast Jaw is very good. Also, uh, fighting the Conjurer here and also a Lock Shop. Now, some floors will have uh, where the shop is kind of blocked off, I mean, blocked off this way, it'll typically have uh, more enticing items. As you can see, he picked up the, the Strength Charm. The Strength Charm is uh, we will grant him a permanent plus one damage. And also yeah, picking up the Karate Gi. Six damage Another... here. That's mostly just a reminder of myself. If you ever forget how much damage you're dealing and um, kill enemies faster than you're expecting, you're likely going to step on their gold. So it's really important that I keep close tabs on how much damage my attacks deal. Mm. Also getting the uh, pulse tomes. The tomes are a um, another way you can uh, use spells in this game is temporary spell you pulse tome. There are three pulse tomes. The pulse spell um, hits all diagonal, I mean is a spell that hit all, hits <clears throat> all diagonal directions around you. Deals five damage to enemies. Ooh, there's a... Okay, that's a really good item, the Ring of Peace. The Ring of Peace makes it so that less enemies spawn, and it also makes the mini-bosses easier. So, uh, for Coda especially, this, that is a very, very good thing. You also see he um, gets the Leprechaun to spawn there, so he can kill him and obtain the Lucky Charm. Uh, it allows him to not get hit by bats. Oh, you got two Glass Torches! Yeah! Dual-wielding glass torches! Oh my goodness. How come your mom lets you have two of those? Jeez. Yeah, the Lucky Charm is pretty good. Um, it upgrades... Um, it makes him immune to bats. Very good. Yeah, bats, bats move, move randomly. randomly. With the Lucky Charm, they won't attack me on their movement unless they have no other choice. Mm -hmm. The first boss in this is Coral Rift. Pretty simple boss, he just uh, throw, throws the dagger here and then bombs the uh, head. And, although um, he had to make sure to move the tentacles out of the way because if gold goes over his dagger, he won't be able to pick it up again. Okay, you only have one dagger. So, yeah. gotta make sure gold doesn't end up below it if you throw it. And I swapped out the Blast Helm there, so you can get the extra bombs from it, but he's going to keep the Glass Jaw for the double damage. And also, we're on Zone 2 here. Now, Zone 2 has a lot of these, like, little rooms that uh, typically have bombs in them, or, like, a, a secret chest or something, or, like, a trap room, like, right here. Uh, it also in, uh, has Tar, where, like, in the first when he died to that Tar monster. Ooh, there's the bomb charm. Uh, the bomb charm makes your bombs big and safe, so it, it increases their blast radius and you don't take damage from them. It's uh, very, very good. Here's the, the heart transplant. The heart transplant allows you to move freely for a temporary amount of time. Coming up to uh, the second boss, Deep Blues. Deep Blues is a uh, chess-themed boss. He's going to take care of all of these little pieces here. Or he can uh, create an opening. Oh, no. right there. Just hoping for the heavy glass there. Didn't get it. Uh, yeah, the glass armor um, protects him from damage once. Um, and the heavy glass... For, um, does that three times. You can actually stack it, which I didn't know for a while and was very uh, interesting when I found out. Now we're on to zone three. Is the hot and cold level. One side has hot coals. It's fire themed. And the other side has ice that you can slide on and it's you know, ice. With the glass torch, he is able to see where the mini boss is. So... Very good for mapping and knowing, knowing where to go, minimizing the amount of enemies he has to deal with, especially with the Ring of Peace. There are less of those enemies. Right, Zone 3 can be... Song in the game, so I'm going to have to focus on this, though. Just uh, let me focus this. Okay, we got six damage. Um, bomb charm. Okay. Uh, fetal positions. Okay. I sh Alright, 
right, well done there. Now we're on to zone four. Now zone four, um, this is a little more linear, um, structured a bit more linearly than uh, other zones in the game. It is always, I mean, the exit is always in a diagonal direction from where you start. So as you see, it starts from the, the bottom right. The exit will always be um, up right, uh, up left. It also has goo, so you see he shrinks, and he can't do anything when he's on that goo. He needs to be care uh, careful of that. It also has stuff like warlocks, uh, which um, teleport to the uh, where you killed them. It also has liches that can confuse you, which inverts your movement temporarily, and that's also very scary. The barrel mimic. Um, it also has these harpies that move large, uh, move long distances, and blade masters, which can parry your attacks and attack you. Very. Uh, this is a quite a scary zone, but Spooty is able to kill pretty much everything in one hit since he has the uh, damage ups. So four three now. Four three is the uh, the second fastest on it. Also has those gargoyles like that one. Oh, <laughs> the boots of lunging. The funny feet. The funny feet. Them. We're not taking them this run. They're way too dangerous. They make you move four tiles at once. So that was the hardest floor in the game, generally four three right there, and made it through pretty easily. So fortissimal four here. If we sit, hug him the bottom row in this fight, we can um, avoid aggroing the liches. I'm gonna try and take advantage of that. Gotta uh, kill the skeletons so that uh, there's an opening for him to get off the stage. You could also, like, bomb him off the stage and stuff, too. As you see here, he gets him off the stage. There he goes. Okay, so zone 5 is generally actually easier than zone 4, so home stretch, just gotta make sure I don't drop a beat. Yeah, so zone 5. Uh, as is usually a long hallway with a lot of these little disconnected rooms. To know where the exit is, you just gotta look for the biggest room. And uh, there's also this wire that you can stand on, that you um, stand on it and attack enemies. You'll arc damage. That is very good. He also picked up the transmute spell from his boss. Uh, the transmute spell allows you to Transmute items into other items if you don't like the items that you are given. And the final floor, 5-3. Alright. We hear that metronome. Bit scary. And we got the heart transplant here, which is, gives me free mo movement for 20 seconds. So I'm just going to use that to make this fight real easy. And but time is time is now. We're done. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Whew. So yeah, I'm super glad to get that done uh, within two attempts. Uh, like I said, Coda is uh, the devs thought it, she would be impossible to beat. Um, I remember talking to Ryan, the head dev, about this, and uh, he said that like um, he pretty much made adjustments to her gameplay until he was able able to beat the first zone, and then said, "Yeah, it's good enough. We'll go with that." Um, and yeah, they attacked probably impossible. They didn't think it would be doable. Um, and uh, if you, uh, those of you who have been watching HDQ for a while, uh, may remember I. Um, ran this category back in HDQ, I think 2016, uh, before the DLC came out. Um, that run used Ring of Phasing a lot, which lets you go into walls. And it was shortly after that run um, that, that Ryan uh, was kind of like, okay, yeah, Ring of Phasing makes the game too easy. Uh, we need to take that out of the game. And so he made the impossible more impossible and we're still rising the challenge not just me but like a good 30 other people have uh, beaten coda and uh it's just uh it's really great to be able to showcase this i'm, I'm really happy to have uh, pulled it off pretty neatly um 
And, um, yeah, one last uh, shout-out before we're done. Um, just want to give shout-outs to Condor League. Uh, they host tournaments in this game. Most of them, actually none of them, are on uh, Coda. Um, and they're super accessible. There's Junior League tournaments uh, that are always open to sign up. I, if you think you might like running this game, uh, go look them up uh, and look into signing up for the next tournament because uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a very active community, very supportive, and uh, always open to helping each other out. And uh, I will add that the game is like on a ridiculous sale right now, too. So uh, now's as good a time as any. But uh, thanks to everyone who donated to the soundtrack uh, bid war as well. Um, really appreciate just being able to raise so much money for uh, COVID relief. Um, and uh, yeah, again, shout outs to Ryan Clark and the Brace Yourself Games crew. Um, actually have some stuff from them showcased in the back of the cam there. Uh, that poster, here, let me bring in a little close to the camera. The, one of the uh, lead artist designers for this made, uh, made this for me after, uh, after I got the code one record one time. Uh, so yeah, they're just a, they're a group that's really supportive of their speedrunning community. So, um, yeah, just happy to show off the game, happy to send them some love. And, um, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, um, do you have anything to say, Goof? Oh, I'm good. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's all I've got. We, uh, should be coming up on the final message at the end of the credits here in just a second. The, uh, those of you who have been in my stream know this sound. Attained Necro Mastery. Necro Mastery. And there we go. Final time, 825.36. That's all I got. Thanks for having us. All right. Thank you very much, Booty Biscuit, for that fantastic run of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Unbelievable. Had a few donations coming for that, especially this $400 anonymous donation that said good luck spooty $500 towards Super Mario Odyssey put that on there $50 from Ronkley who says 22 minute estimate more like sub 19 as in let's subtract COVID-19 get it done spooty and go Queens we had $50 from a lamb who says love Necro Dancer and love GDQ incredible run stay home and stay safe everyone We had $50 from Royal Blue Wizard who said, Gotta donate during the Rhythm Game block. This is a fantastic cause, and I'm glad to support providing essentials for our healthcare providers. Keep safe, everyone. Enjoy the marathon and stay healthy. $25 from Skip McLazy who says, Gotta donate for one of the greatest games of all times, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, and make sure that Danny B's Danny B gets the music spotlight he deserves. Thank you all again for all of your donations that have come on through. Uh, looking at the total here, we are just on the edge of $200,000. So make sure you guys keep your donations coming in. I'm over here on the East Coast where it's 2, it's 10.45 p.m. We're already almost at $200,000. Let's get that 200 k sooner rather than later. And right now, we're currently getting set up here for our next run that will conclude the Rhythm Game block. We're coming up for our next run that's currently getting set up. It's LP Soldier 0303 with Resident Evil 7. That is still getting set up here. Still going through a little, a little of your donations here for the moment. We have a $25 donation from Lolly Blizz, who says, I hadn't realized GDQ was doing this. And to be honest, I have never been so proud of the speedrunning community. Way to bring joy and care in one amazing bundle. $250 came in um, from Will Larceny, who says the Condor crew is Rudy for Spooty. Always awesome to see Necro Dancer on GDQ, and we couldn't ask for a better ambassador for our community. Go kick Coda's butt to help society kick COVID-19. Hope to see you in Season 10. Eyes emoji. All 
All right. Well, that is going to do it for me. Thank you, GDQ, for having me on the uh, virtual host desk. Uh, always an honor doing this. Uh, we're going to send it over to our next host, the wonderful Smooth Operative. She'll be taking you through the next few runs. And again, LP Soldier 0303 is coming up with Resident Evil 7. This is it for me. An Eternal Enigma, I'm out. We're going to go to a quick Twitch ad. When we come back, Smooth Operative will have taken you over. Everybody, welcome back to Corona Relief Done Quick. I am Smooth Operative and I will be taking over hosting duties for the next couple of runs. Up next, we have Resident Evil 7 by LP Soldier 0303. And while they are getting set up for that run, I just want to remind everyone that all of this is for direct relief. Uh, COVID 19 coronavi coronavirus efforts are focused on the personal protective equipment, uh, masks, gowns, gloves that are most needed across the world. And in addition to providing PPE, direct Direct Relief is supporting U.S. community clinics and health centers with chronic disease medications to make sure that people living with these conditions do not go into acute crisis as a result of the surge of people needing medical care due to COVID-19. Um, Direct Relief is ramping up efforts to provide the prescription medications and medical resources needed for most severe cases that require hospitalization and ICU care. You can learn more about Direct Relief's ongoing efforts related to COVID-19 at directrelief.org uh, slash emergencies slash coronavirus dash outbreak. Um, so thank you so much for all of the donations that have been coming in so far for the marathon. You are all incredible. <laughs> uh, so let's hear from a couple of you here. Uh, I have some donations. We have $130 from Jimmy Boy. Such a great event and glad I could catch it this weekend. We're in this together. Thank you runners and thank you event staff for setting this thing up. Thank you so much for your donation.
We have $50 from Snuffleupi, the Necro Dance. There was amazing. Thank you for working so hard for COVID-19 relief. We have $100 from Chrysanthemum. Thank you, GDQ, and everyone for helping to fight COVID-19. This is all for the amazing healthcare professionals who are working hard for us. Lots of love to everyone affected by this. Stay strong. We'll get through this together. Okay, everyone, we had a slight hiccup, but that kind of thing happens with online marathons. So now we are getting ready for Resident Evil 7 with LP Soldier. Let's go. Let's go.